The Raptors lose their final game of the road trip to the Miami Heat despite a triple-double from Scotty Barnes and great games from Jakob Pertl and RJ Barrett. Let's go to the film room. So this was Jakob Pertl's best game as a Raptor since Scotty Barnes returned from injury. And I think there was a specific emphasis to take advantage of the switching scheme the Miami Heat were running all game. Right here, Heat switched the action with RJ and Jakob. Now there's Terry Rozier. Now Haywood Highsmith is on Jakob. They take advantage of that and feed him inside. But I think another byproduct of this is the increased three-point attempts for Scotty Barnes, who is taking advantage of the switches, that moment in time where the defense switches to take the shot, to take a three-point shot. And so that's why I think his volume has upticked on those three-point shots. Uh, and I don't mind it, to be honest with you. Right here, anticipating the switch, he goes ahead and just buries it from 35 feet out. Same idea here. Jakob, Scotty, pick and roll. They switch. Feeds it to Jakob against Haywood Highsmith in the post. This time, they outright blitz the pick and roll. Dump off pass to Jakob, who's great on those push shots. And it only makes sense for Scotty in these moments to take this shot. Yes, I would like for him to be more aggressive in certain situations, attack the basket, but I also don't mind him trying to stretch the floor, at least at the beginning of games, to pressure the defense in certain areas. Same idea here, you know, they switch the dribble handoff between RJ and Jakob, and so he dumps it off to Jakob, who gets fouled on the inside. Same thing, a blitz, dump off in the short roll, and the floater. In the second half, same idea, they switch. Dump off to Jakob. And this is why I think the byproduct of these situations is Scotty uptick in three-point shots. So you see them switch. Doesn't have the post-entry pass. And instead just decides to rise up over Bam Adebayo. Scotty obviously can take Bam Adebayo in the post. But because Bam is the stronger player here. And Scotty isn't the quickest player in the world. The, the best shot he can get is, is an off-the-dribble jump shot against Bam Adebayo. Same idea here. They just immediate blitz and then dump off past the Jakob. And so the Raptors did find a way offensively to get Jakob involved in this game. And, uh, you know, Samson has talked about this on the timeline. He did a little thread about it. Uh, it's something that I've noticed as well. It's it's the Scotty Jakob pick and roll and um, how ineffective it's been to start this this last, you know, five or ten, five or six games, whatever it is that Scotty has returned from injury. I think part of that is because teams are just saying, you know what, we'll live with the switch. If Jakob Pertl beats us on a post-up, Jakob Pertl beats us on a post-up. That's not necessarily the offense we want the Raptors. Uh, we're, we're living with that shot, essentially, right? Uh, and so the Raptors just said, hey, if you're living with it, cool. We trust in our big man tonight. And Jakob had a great game. Um, I believe that Jakob can take advantage of, of smaller players in the post. And if that continues, if that trend continues for the Raptors, they'll have to rely on him more offensively. But Samson also mentioned in his thread, and I think this is 100% true, um, the Raptors, the ineffectiveness of that Scotty Jakob pick and roll is because the Raptors don't have their two most lethal shooters in and an Emmanuel quickly and a Grady Dick who they would run in like drag screen actions or staggered screen actions and have one of them pop out to the three point line to create that lane of space for Scotty to attack middle or for the defense to just have to, for a second, think about what they want to do. And that creates an open opportunity for Jakob or Scotty and whatnot. Uh, it is, it is interesting though. Cause you look back at like the Pistons game where, you know, instead of switching the Pistons, we're just committing to a deep drop. And that's just the Pistons scheme. Like generally the, the Pistons are fine with more above the break three point shots. They dare you to take those shots. And that's why Scotty took a bunch. I think the Pelicans are very, very similar. And so that's why Scotty took 12 threes. Um, it'll depend on what scheme the defense is throwing out on those certain nights, but that is why you're seeing an uptick in three-point shots from Scotty Barnes. That's why you're seeing Jakob Pertl figuring things out on offensively next to Scotty. Uh, that being said, I'm still pretty high on on how those two look, at least in the short term, and how they develop together. I think you know Scotty's Jakob ceiling ability and Jakob screening ability will only open up things for Scotty, especially once the team gets more healthy with guys like Emmanuel Quickly and Grady Dick coming back and spacing the floor for them. Uh, one guy who's interesting though, and I think this, this game had a lot of interesting play from the rookies. I just talked about, you know, RJ and Jakob and Scotty having successful nights. Scotty had a triple double was really, really assertive. Uh, I, I thought was great as a playmaker throughout. Um, but I think one of the more interesting things was the rookies and the rookies shining all season. Truthfully, I've broken down Jonathan Mobo before Jamison battle had a great game against the Pelicans that I wasn't able to break down. It's all good. I'm sure he'll have another one that I can break down. 
but one guy I wanted to talk about who who I thought has had a pretty interesting moment or two here tonight was Jacoby Walter, who started in his second NBA game. So let's go to the film room. I really enjoyed Jacoby Walter's ball handling, but uh, I think his jump shot just looks really smooth. And I will say, I've seen the man in practice go band for band with Grady Dick on three-point shots. Just going at it. They're both hitting their shots, knocking them down at a high rate. Uh, he hasn't shot the ball well at the NBA level yet, but I do believe in the jump shot. And uh, I think it'll come around. And so I'm looking at the form. I'm seeing it. I think it's nice. I think it'll eventually come around. Uh, and you're seeing him shoot it in stride. Really enjoy him attacking closeouts. Again, this is just the ball handling, but also recognition. Good finish here. I think this will be important as Jacoby... Uh, I think this will be important as Jacoby grows out his game, that corner three and knocking it down. Again, like Grady Dick in his rookie year, this will be an essential part for Jacoby. It's finding a way to impact the game in the corners first, because that's realistically where he's going to be plotted. Um, and then finding a way to expand from there. I like his, again, the ball handling. I like his feel as a passer. Goes through this pick and roll. Nothing there. Little tween dribble. And then nice pass to Jakob. Really, really good feel as a passer and, and uh, ball handler here in certain situations. And so that will only grow. Really liked this defensive possession and I thought Jacoby had a few great defensive possessions. Watch him follow Duncan Robinson and force this miss on a block shot clock violation. Using his length is a massive part of the defensive game for Jacoby Walter. He was doing a lot of, of, of digging, recovering, and so sometimes he got burned tonight, but I overall really like the effort and the aggression on the defensive end. Back to that ball handling again, pick and roll, just pulls up into a mid-range jumper, and so you see how comfortable his jumper looks in that mid-range area, which is basically a college three. Uh, like, you can tell that that is a much more comfortable shot for him right now. It is about expanding that range and expanding that arsenal to make it more comfortable from the three-point line. I feel like that's just an evolution for him to like just gain some muscle which is very very similar to what we saw from rookie year Grady Dick good job here in transition anticipating the pass and getting the steal and so uh you know the the version of Jacoby that's really interesting is this sort of two-way player who can create a little bit off of the bounce on the second side and also make some shots for you make some plays for you um you know second side action weak side you swing it to him he can kind of attack a close out and make a play and then on the defensive end using his length to be a deter both in passing lanes you know you saw that steal but also on ball using his length to really really just bother guys uh and get into their get into their grill right so jacoby's fun honestly jacoby is a lot of fun uh and i i think that the raptors also have another player in their hands that they can kind of develop um it'll be a process though you know like remember rookie year Grady Dick. And I'm not saying that Jacoby's going to turn into Grady Dick. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, I think I'm just using it as a point of reference to note for you guys that it's a process, that Rome wasn't built in a day and neither will Jacoby Walter's game. And he, he'll he have to develop. I think he'll get 905 reps when the 905 are here and the Raptors are in home and whatnot. I think the injuries have allowed for Jacoby to step into this bigger role but ultimately like he's gonna his opportunities will be more G League more this similar to what Grady's was to start the year and so once the Raptors end up maybe trading a couple of guys or something else happens on the roster I imagine the second half of the season Jacoby will get much more extended run to stretch his legs and figure out what he can do and so uh, I'm excited I, I truthfully am. I think Jacoby is a really intriguing player. I like the ball handling. I like the shooting. I like the finishing. Uh, just a lot of good things to like from Jacoby Walter so far. I enjoy the defense as well. Uh, and so we'll see how much more he can grow and, and what his end progress looks like at his rookie year. You know, in April, how will we be talking about Jacoby Walter? That's one of the more intriguing things for the rest of this Raptors season. But I thought Jonathan Mobo had a really, really great stretch, especially in that second quarter paired next to Scotty Barnes. It feels like those two just have a, a great level of chemistry with one another. No surprise there. Uh, but, you know, Mobo is just like a, a menace, you know, offensive rebounds, uh, great job defensively, you know, in and around the basket, short roll area, making plays and finishing around the basket too. really, really impressive stuff from Jonathan Mobo. Uh, Jamal Shedd has been quiet as of late you know, hasn't been the greatest, hasn't been the most effective, but I think it's 
partially trying to figure out what he can do on the offensive end. And also, you know, when he isn't the biggest dog in the room on the defensive front, how can he impact the game defensively? I think that's two questions moving forward with Jamal Shedd that I have uh, because I think he's been a little bit inconsistent recently, but that's fine. He's a rookie. He'll figure it out. It's all good. I actually think 905 reps for a guy like Jamal Shedd might be useful to iron out some of the wrinkles offensively. Uh, Jamison Battle, really, really fun. Great shooter. I mean, the man is shooting 43% from three to start the season, albeit on low volume. And, you know, Blake Murphy had a tweet uh, earlier today saying, you know, Basically, the 50 games he'll have as a two-way player for the Raptors would be right after the trade deadline. That would expire right after the trade deadline if he played every single game. And so I think given where the Raptors are at and what they'll do with a Chris Brown or Chris Boucher or maybe someone else on the roster, I think it's likely that we see Jameson Battle get extended run in the second half and Jacoby Walter get extended run in the second half. And yeah, I think that's a very, very viable path for more minutes to these guys, especially in the second half of the season. But overall in this game, turnovers killed the Raptors. Uh, You know, Miami took a bunch of more shots. They dominated in transition. Uh, They were able to make three-point shots in the second half. You know, in the first half, they only made seven threes. In the second half, they made 14. And so it was was basically regression back to the norm for Miami, who was a very, very good three-point shooting team this season. And yeah, I think that that was the game. Uh, they got another chance at it against Miami on Sunday, uh, That this time in Toronto, and they have a three-week homestand, which is good because the Raptors are much better at home than they are on the road. They only have one win on the road. So we'll see if they can maybe pick up some wins here and pick up some momentum. Maybe you guys don't want that. Maybe the ethical tankers in the comments want them to continue being on the road and losing. I'm okay with whatever, baby. Whatever happens this season, I'm cool. I think... If you look at the standings and where they're at and like what the situation is, obviously, you know, I don't think the Raptors are in a position to want to gun for a play in, but they might fall into it. And I I mean, truthfully, I don't think they will. Let's just say this. Even if the Raptors were close to the play in, I think they would pull the plug and decide not to go for the play. In. <laughs> I, I know it's crazy to say that. And I, it's so early into the season to even consider that type of conversation. But I do think that given where the Raptors are at and them looking for, you know, they've been to Rutgers games, they've been to St. John's games, they've been to like, you know, going to check out some of these high touted prospects already. I think the Raptors know that they would like a high pick in this draft. And so we'll see. We will see what happens on the pick front. We will see what happens on the ethical tank front. Either way, a good game, another hard fought game for the Toronto Raptors. That ended up in a loss. So that's a win for your ethical tankers. That's a win for your vibers and good vibers. That's a win for your development freaks like myself who enjoy the development of this team. And that's it, folks. Appreciate you guys as always. Subscribe to the Raptors Republic YouTube channel. We are so close to 12,000 subscribers. We need you all, though, to get us to that level. So if you're listening right now and you are not subscribed and you like my work and Samson's work and Trey and everybody else who does podcasts on this Raptors Republic network, subscribe, like, comment. Make sure this gets to people who might enjoy it as well. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.